everyone. Um, thanks for joining me. I apologize for being a little bit late today. After such an amazing Hatterday, second Saturday, I was just so sleepy and I overslept a little bit today. But I'm super excited to show you the next round of um, activities that we're going to be making in September. So our um, title for the next couple weeks is going to be Hitting the Books. We're all back to school, but did you know that art books are one of my favorite um, things to make? I love making, there's all these different kinds of cool books that you can make um, and fill them with art. So today we are going to be making a really fun and customizable accordion book that looks like what it sounds like an accordion so it goes in and out and in and out <laughs> i'll get it backwards um to make our accordion book today all you need are is paper i'm using colored paper um you can use white paper white paper works great um you need some kind of printed paper or just another white, more white paper that you can draw on. This is going to be our cover. I'm using um, some leftover paper, like examples that I made from one of my stamping videos. So I really like this kind of abstract blue stamping action I've got going on on this piece of paper. Um, You'll need a little bit of cardboard. I'm using like a thin cardboard. You'll need two pieces cut the same size. This is going to be your cover. Um, you can use a thin cardboard, like I had just some laying around in my recycling bin, or a cereal box makes a really great cover because it's just easier to cut. It just needs to be a little bit sturdier than paper but not so unwieldy that you can't cut it down into the same size. So I have two of these, some paper to cover my, tie, uh, my uh, covers with, and you're gonna need some glue. I'm just using glue stick. I actually like, especially for this project where anything that you have kind of like to worry about like where you're putting your glue, um, I actually like the purple kind that turns clear when it dries. That way I can just see where my glue is going because we do need a little bit of precision for this project, but not a ton. So the first thing you're going to do I is I'm going to make my covers. So with I know my cover is about this size. I have one that I already did, so I covered it in um, my paper and I wrapped it on this side like kind of like a Christmas present um, these are the same size ish as best as I could do um, everything in this project is like the same size ish like I'm using scissors and I'm not like using a paper cutter or anything like that so it's not going to be 100% precise, and that is A-OK. -okay. Um, so, to make my cover, I'm going to put this to the side. Um, it's really, honestly, like wrapping a present. The one thing I will say is I'm going to show you on this how I have been gluing everything for this book. Um, so I like to do when I glue, I'm using quite a bit of glue. I'm making sure it's really, I'm kind of pushing down. I mean, I'm trying, I'm not making, pushing so hard that I'm getting like chunks of glue to come off, but I'm going around my edges and then I like to do an X in the middle. So around the edge and then an X in the middle and then I'm going to put it down. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just kind of making sure that I've got enough here. I'll show you. 
on each side to fold over like a Christmas present. So then, let's see, I have more on this side because I just did. That's okay, we'll make it work. So then I'm folding this side here and this side down like this. And I'm gonna glue these down. You could use tape, I guess. I like glue just because then it just looks a little cleaner. You don't have tape, but it's really like taping. It's like um, wrapping a gift. You could also use wrapping paper. Honestly, I've done that before too. Um, if you want like a patterned outside, you can use wrapping paper to um, cover your covers. I remember using, I would use wrapping paper to do make book covers for my textbooks. I don't know if that's still a thing, but in high school or middle school, they would check out a book to you and that was your textbook and I would use wrapping paper to make a book cover. Um, okay, so I've got these ends glued down. You notice when I was gluing it, I was really kind of pushing down. It's okay to take a couple minutes or a couple, like count to 10 or so and just really kind of hold it to kind of make sure that it's gonna stay with us. So then I don't need all this side. So I'm gonna cut probably about like here. Um, see if I can, this is a fun trick. Just trying to cut from the back like that. I'm using the window to kind of see through, but that's what, so that you guys can see. Obviously, I mean, I did that without really looking, so that's what we're kind of talking about as far as like not being perfect. And then I'm gonna take each corner and I'm gonna, yeah, fold it like that. See that? Like that. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. If I glue it like this, it's a little quicker. Okay. And then I'm going to fold it over like I'm wrapping a gift. I, if I'm, as I'm looking at this, I wish I, had more of this paper, I would have done bigger folds um, so that I would have covered up more of my brown part. So if you're doing it with other paper, I would say it's a good it's a good idea to do it a little thicker. So like on the one I did, it's obviously, covering up more of my brown cardboard. And that's what you want. But we're gonna make this work because this is the paper that I have. And that's okay. Okay, so now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make our pages. And so I've also kind of made some of those ahead of time to kind of shorten our video, but I'll show you how to do it. So with this, since we're making kind of a custom shaped book, uh, you need to cut your pages to size. So what I did is, um, I'll use my other one that's dry as an example. I took my piece of paper. I'm doing, I was inspired by the blue patterns and so I'm doing shades of blue, but white 
is probably a really great beginner accordion book. Um, that way you just don't have to work. It's just a little easier. Um, so what I did is I lined it up here on the corners. And I traced with a pen. And then... my other one because I want it to be long enough that it makes a, a spread so when you open the book there's pages on both sides not just one little square um, and then I traced here and then I cut it out So this is great for working on your scissor skills and hand-eye coordination to follow the line. Okay, so then I had my rectangle like this, but I don't really want my page to be like as big as my cover. Like if you look at a hardback book, um, usually the pages, like paperbacks, they're all the same, but if you look at a hardback book, you usually have your cover and then inside your pages are a little bit smaller than the cover. Um, and so what I did is I, you know, this is the height and width of my two covers. And honestly, I just eyeballed it and I took a little bit off on this part and I took a little bit off on this part trying to keep it straight you could use a ruler if you want to um, to keep it straight and I just made it slightly smaller than my cover but Still, you notice when we glue this in, it will cover the brown. So I don't want it to be so small that it doesn't cover this part, but I want it to be a little bit smaller than my cover. So when we glue it in, it'll look like that and it'll look really cool and you won't be able to see the cardboard at all. So then the next thing I did is you can add as many pages to this book as you want. Um, the only thing is that since we're working with a custom kind of shape, you need to trace the shape that you made on all of your pages. So if I'm making a page, I would trace this and I would cut that out and I would do that for as many pages as I want, but I would always trace the same original page. I would not use this to trace another page because that way, like by tracing the original page all the time, you're more likely to end up with a, um, with pages of a book that are all the same size rather than getting like slowly bigger or smaller as you like scale up for each one. So always trace the original page that you cut. Um, like you, like I said, you can then cut out as many of these as you want, um, depending on how long you want your book to be. So I already cut all mine because I didn't want to watch, have you guys watch me just like laboriously cut. It doesn't take that long. It's just, a lot of cutting and if you have a paper cutter that will work better but I don't so I use scissors and then we make our page so here I'll use the one that I'm actually using because I spent a little more time on that I'm going a little fast for you guys um, 
but I took a little bit more time when I was doing it on the back end. So I've got, this is going to be actually one of the pages that goes into my book. Um, so what you do is one of my favorite things to fold in the middle, you're going to have to fold all of your pages. So to make the accordion. So what I do is I take my page and I line up the corners and I put my finger here to hold it in place. And then I take my other finger and I go down like that to the part that I'm folding and then hold that in place and use my other finger to spread it out. So then you have a nice sharp crease and your pages are lined up. So that, I'll do that again. So I start like this, I fold it, I line, I watch my things, I line it up, I hold it so it's not going anywhere. I trace my finger down and then over and then middle and over and that will keep you making a really nice crisp fold for your pages. So I've already done that and now I'm going to show you how to glue your pages together. So an accordion, um, I've already done many pages but an accordion is just like what it sounds like. So it will look, it will spread out like this, like an accordion or a slinky. Um, so when you're doing it, I honestly, for each page, will go and check myself um, to make sure that I'm gluing on the right way. But the best part is we have glue stick, which is a little more forgiving. So, when I start, here I'll show you with this one. So I've got two sheets. This is where when having just all white paper makes it a lot easier. Um, I wanna make sure that I have one that's going like a V from my perspective, and then one that's going like an N or something so I've got one where it's like this and one where it's like this and they you glue them together and then you glue these pages together so it makes like a Z but the ones my fingers that are touching that's what we're gluing together so I'm going to glue like this and then for the next one it would be this was the right size, it's not, but it would be back like a V. So I've got two V's and then with a N or something, so it looks like a W. So when I spread my accordion out, it looks like a series of like, it's like I see an M and then I see a W and then I see an M and a W, but it's really just trial and error. Like I said, I will stand up my pages like this to figure out how I want to glue them before I actually glue them. Um, and you can glue them like this where they hold hands like that, or you can glue them like this. If you're doing white pages, I would glue them like this where they are kind of hugging each other so they won't, they're less likely to pull apart. Um, you, for mine, since I'm working with different colored pages, some of them are glued like this where they could potentially pull apart easier, but it's just the risk I'm willing to take, you know? So I've got my gradient here as you can see, I started with this purple color, then I went to a dark blue, and then I went to a teal, and then I have my light blue, and then my teal, and then I've got my dark blue. So I wanna make sure that when I glue it, I can still see this page because I wanna keep this color. So I could glue it like that, but then I wouldn't get to see that color anymore. 
Um, so it's going down, so it needs to go back up in some way. Um, but I don't want to glue it like that because I want to be able to see the color. But if I glue it like this, it's still going down and up and you can still see my dark blue color. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to actually put my glue here on my, and I usually will like leave it like this. So I remember like, I'll put my glue here. I'll put this on top. Does that make sense? So I'll put my glue here, put this one on top and I'll just leave it like this. So I remember that I'm just, I'm not going, I'm just putting it on top. Okay. I can say that a thousand times, but sometimes my first one, I'll definitely have, well, you, you might mess up. So it's a good idea to do a practice. Um, just because with books and this kind of, it can be a little tricky. And especially if you're watching a video from me, like it's hard to see on a video. So I can go through the, the steps, but I would definitely recommend that you kind of test it with some test paper before you do your actual book. And then, okay, so I'm ready to glue and I'm gonna line the edge of my paper up with the crease in my fold. And I'm gonna put my middle, my finger down here and do the same thing like when I was folding and then over like that. You really kinda of wanna get this as lined up as you can. The great part about using glue stick is that as long as you aren't like pressing it down before you decide you wanna move it, you have some wiggle room to move your pages around. So there it is, it's stuck. So I've got, and one of the things I like to do, oh, did I do it wrong? Mm, okay. One of the things I like to do is when I have my page, like every time I put on a page, I like fold it back up just to make sure it's still accordioning accordioning right like it can if you glue all your pages together and then you realize that it's not actually doing a zigzag it's doing more of like a circular thing um it can be really frustrating to go back and have to start over so every time I add on a page I will stand it up like this make sure that I can accordion close it so now I have my book. I'm not going to add any more pages because I really like this kind of gradient that I've got going on. And we're ready to put on our covers. So close it up. And then I'll go here. And I'm just going to glue my page onto my cardboard cover. And I'm going to do one side first and then the other so that it stays theoretically like pretty square and straight when I put it on here. So I'm going to take my glue stick. I'm going to do that same box method square all the way around my edges and X in the middle with this part if you wanted to use hot glue you could but with hot glue you get more of like the glue bubbles and I don't really want to get glue bubbles I kind of want it to be as smooth as possible but hot glue works pretty fast um, okay I've got that lined up I'm gonna line this up I'm going to flip it over I'm going to add more glue on my paper I'm going to do a box the box method so a square around the edges 
and then an X in the middle. One, two. Uh, as you can see, I'm go don't be afraid to kind of go over this several times because you want to make sure to have plenty of glue. And then I'm gonna line this up. I'm kind of using my fingers to make sure my corners are lined up before I press. And then I press it really hard. And I'm gonna hold that while I put my glue cap on because we are done assembling our book. I'm gonna leave this. You might put a book on it and let it completely dry. Um, that works, but I will show you it. I mean, glue stick dries pretty quick, so I'll show you what it looks like. So then when we have our book, oh, and the great thing about this book is with the cardboard pages, you can stand it up and it stands up by itself. So then when you're there, you're ready to decorate you can decorate each page like this and like this and like this and like this to tell your story. And then once you've completely told your story, you can stand it up. And so you can see the whole story at once and bonus, you get the other side too. It is a double sided book. Some of my favorite things, tools that I use to color with my books, you can use markers, pencils, whatever. Um, I really like Stabilos and Quick Sticks are some of my favorite kind of tools. You can also even collage in here once you have your book together. Like you can collage with magazines or colored paper or textured paper. You just wanna make sure that you maintain the crease. So when you're collaging, you want to make sure that it, you can still fold it up. Um, I've done collaging in these books. Um, one cool thing is if you think about instead of like a story that's like progressive, where you have a, a beginning, middle and end, and it's a, more of a narrative where it's about a character, you could, these are really fun for showing visual stories. Like, for instance, somebody throwing a ball to another friend or something. You could have your friends here throwing the ball, the ball traveling through like a comic strip on each page, and then the person, the other friend, catching the ball on the end. So that is one of my like go-to like prompts if you're not sure what to put in here is, I mean, you could do anything like you like throwing, like I could do my, me throwing like a ball for Ruby and I, my dog, and I could have Ruby running through each frame, like a comic strip and then catching the ball. Um, so thinking of it like a comic strip sometimes is really cool. You can also just do really beautiful kind of abstract colorways and just do some abstract drawing and shapes. And when you stand it up, it still looks really cool. There's really no way to mess these books up. And then when you're done, there you have it. All right, well, I will see you all next week with another really cool way to make a book. Um, I hope you have fun making this. I've seen some that are like 50 feet long, so you can really kind of go wild with these fun books. And then like that. So I'll see y'all later. Have a great week and I'll see you next week. Bye.